Hey guys, welcome to the channel. So today is going to be the first video in a new series and that's going to be chainsaw carving for the very beginner, the first beginner, the, the, the first time carver, the person thinking about it wants to know, can I just use my stock chainsaw and get going? Now I've done some videos on saws that I recommend for your first saws in carving and what I have done is taken this month's revenue from YouTube, which is not a lot in the scheme of things, and I spent it all on a new steel MS-170. So this is the stock bar and chain, brand new stock saw, which most of you would be using and starting off with. The goal is to carve a bear out of this nine to 10 inch log here, about two foot tall, and uh, use only this chainsaw and maybe a torch, you know, to give it some color. But that is the plan. We're not gonna do eyes. We're gonna get as much detail as we can with the saw, maybe squinty eyes. I don't know, we'll, we'll see what happens. And we're gonna work through this beginner carving series and uh, work our way up to a dime tip bar, up to uh, some power tools and carving burrs and a lot of different things you guys might be watching and seeing me use and do in videos. But hey, let's start with the basics. Let's start with the very bottom. If that's something you're interested in, uh, in watching and being a part of, be sure to give the video a thumbs up, hit subscribe, stick around, because we're gonna start making some saws. Guys, so I always suggest the Steel MS-170 is your first saw. It comes with a 16 inch bar. It's only like a 30 cc saw. This is not a workhorse this isn't for huge carvings but this can get you started in the world of carving and see if you like it and you even want to do it and if you don't then you got a little saw to clean up your property or heck you can sell it now next to getting the chainsaw you need to get yourself some safety chaps chainsaw specific chaps all right i wear the steel um can't remember what they are like the steel woodcutter chaps they do make them in a pant so it goes all the way around do those things, wear safety shoes. Shorts that I'm wearing, not always the best option, but I'm sweating out here today. A pair of gloves that are not rubber, okay? You don't want rubber grip gloves. The oil and gas make everything slippery, so skip those, okay? Get yourself a pair of earmuffs or ear plugs. And a dust mask is a good idea so you're not breathing in so much exhaust and sawdust while you carve. Now I do have a camera set up here so you guys can get a first person view of all the cuts and everything else, basically from this point on, I will, uh, I'll narrate over top of the video through the whole thing so that we can kind of just carve up bear with just the chainsaw and uh, get going. So let's have some fun. All right guys, when you get your saw, that first start might be a little rough. Uh, make sure you're starting it properly. Uh, this is the saw's uh, first or second time getting started, so it gives it a minute just to uh, kind of get the gas and the lines and get it throttled up right and all that first cut going to be the back of the head now we angle the saw back just a little bit all right so looking at the screen the top of the bar is tilted to the left while the bottom of the bar is kicked out to the right just a little and we cut down now this is the back of the head and the back of the bear all right the majority of the saw work actually all of it might be in real time just so you guys know, the MS-170 doesn't cut super fast, so it gives you room to make adjustments as you're cutting, all right? You don't have to go fast. I'm going kind of fast in this video, in reality, but take your time. Now those cuts are the ears at the top. You go in, and as you go in, you pull down and pull out just a little. Kind of cutting in for the back here, the back of the body, just sort of trimming it up as I've got a knot there. And I want that to be kind of nice and trim. Again, cutting in for the back, removing this knot sort of area. As we're cutting, you wanna think triangles and wedges. That's what we're removing. We're gonna be removing triangles and wedges when we're actually doing uh, face cuts, ears, the head, nose, snout, things like that. Even these trimmings have a bit of a, a wedge look to them. So again, you just gotta trim up that back a little bit. Now the saw is brand new, it is good, very sharp. It is important to keep your saws very, very sharp. If you need a sharpening video, let me know and I'll put one together. So here we're cutting into that line for the ear. If 
you work the saw back and forth like I'm doing, you can feel the line. You'll feel the nose of the bar pop through to your original line. And pull it back, and pop it forward, and pull it back. Cut all the way down. Go to the other side, angle your saw. This is going to be the side of the head. Come down, this will be like the sides of the arms and the shoulder area. We're popping through to that line that we cut, and we're actually going right past it. Once, well, not past it into the ear area. Once you get down below the ear, we're cutting straight through though. So this piece can be removed. But we gotta finish our cut going all the way down. Now different logs can make this a little bit different, but this is a big log, so I need to remove a lot of material. Come down in front of the ear, and in case you didn't meet your line, finish that cut, pop through. Work the saw back and forth and feel the line with the nose of the bar. We're taking our time here. Once you guys do a bunch of these, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You'll be able to feel it quicker and easier. So there you go. You got a head with two ears fairly quick. Angle the saw. We're going to cut a wedge. Try to meet your line here. Go in front of that ear, make a cut, kind of remove the material. See, we're sort of shaping our ear out, guys. Go to the other ear, kind of do the same thing. So we're removing material to sort of define our ear area and any excess material that needs to go. To make all these little cuts, and then we'll come through with the saw and sort of start chopping pieces off, all right? Up cut. Now keep in mind guys, don't don't like get all loosey goosey grip on the saw. Have a good grip. You can have kickback, especially when you're using the nose of the bar to make these cuts. It can just kick back at you. That's that's where you can get hurt. So don't get all super comfortable and oh I got this. You know, like if you're new, things are gonna happen that you're not used to or expecting. And it might catch you off guard. So, have your guard up. Be safe, be paying attention, okay? Be ready, because it happens, especially if there's a knot in the wood. If there's a knot in the wood, the nose of the bar, the chain, and everything doesn't quite cut as fast, sometimes it hits it and, you know, kicks that bar back up toward you. You just wanna have a good grip and be ready for it. So we're just removing those little cut areas by the ears. See, it defines them really really nice a little bit of an overcut there on the side but it's all right we'll make do he'll be just fine just trimming my ears getting rid of the hard edges because we're not going to be using really any other tools so we got to make a lot of little cuts to make everything line up really nice now, right here, we're going down, look on the left, as tall as the bar is, right? And we're angled, the saw was angled, so he's cutting away from the ears, just a little. Straight cut back, so that's where our eyes and forehead area is going to be. A little bit of ear must have caught my eye there, removing that. Cleaning it up just a touch. Now, you angle the saw sideways, and you go to the face and angle it in for the snout. So we're kind of making the snout look like a wedge. You guys can see better here on the right-hand side. So it tapers a little bit. We're gonna angle the saw down, kind of cut straight across here under the snout. If you can, it's a good idea to remove your bark before you even start carving. Less risk of hitting dirt and stones and all that. Now here, just kiss the side of the face and go in and out, just popping through to that line so you can feel it with the nose of the saw. You're taking your time. See me working the saw back and forth just a little. Pop it into the line, pull it out. Pop, pull, pop, pull, all right? Sometimes those chunks will come right out. You hit it perfect. Sometimes you don't. You gotta go back through, make a second pass. You're not going real deep though, you're just kissing at this point, you know what I mean? With the nose of the bar, it's about saw control. If you're finding your arms getting tired, take a break. 
don't push through, take a break. You're gonna be using a lot of muscles you don't normally use, and you gotta build those muscles up. Believe me, you can pull muscles, and it sucks. So cutting that nose, we angled back just a little bit. Now right now we're cutting under the head and into what'll be sort of the neck area. We're angling down just a little bit. We're gonna cut in and remove all this material right here. Try to get it out of the way. So we start thinking about arms and chest area. Wedges, see that? Another wedge going. And right, guys, looking at this, we're gonna be using the top of the bar and pulling back. Now, if that nose catches us right, you can get kicked back. But as you see, left-hand side of the screen, we're cutting up, angling up with the saw up to the bottom of the face there in the neck area. Keep your area clean, okay? You don't wanna be tripping on anything. Give yourself enough space to walk around your bear. We're just making cuts up. All right, then we go in here, we plunge cut about three inches, just a little bit, because this log is really about 10 or 12 inches across. I think I said smaller in the beginning, but it's about 10 or 12. Popping into that line. It's kind of outlining the chest there. And this line going across will define the tops of the arms and paws, because this is a sitting bear. We're creating a sitting bear who's gonna be holding the uh, top of his paw. <clears throat> Okay, so that's top of the arm. Come on to the other side. Attempt to do the same thing. Clean it up. Cutting in. Kind of cutting across right here. Because that chest area needs to be trimmed out. So I'm just cutting straight across and removing a bunch of material at once right here, but not cutting into the arm on the other side, okay? I don't want his chest to stick out past his arms. Now I'm cutting back across to that original cut where the arm will be on the other side, and we're just removing more material here, kind of working back and forth, cutting it away. As you go, you'll realize you gotta remove more material. It's better to make smaller cuts when you're just starting out rather than a bunch of big ones. It's easier to take away than it is to put the wood back. So, make small cuts, make adjustments as you go. Size things a little big and then start trimming them down once you get to that point. Again, trimming the chest to the arm area, down near the belly. This guy's very basic. We're not getting down to super crazy detail or even super accurate body size for the head. We just kind of want this cute looking bear. That's what sells when people like that. All right, so just small cuts, still just removing material around the belly area. Now I get sidetracked easy, so stop working on the belly and start working on this arm. Now those cuts are only going in maybe half an inch. We're kind of making a line on the outside and in the front there. Kind of define where the arm and paw is gonna be, okay? Making a cut all the way down. That's about two inches deep right there. It's gonna define the side of the leg and the lower paw that he's gonna be holding. Wedge cut, remove it. Finding that arm a little bit more, come in. You're gonna use the end of the bar near the nose and you're making up cuts with it angled up to that line. See how that's an angle cut? And you're cutting up. So you have a little bit of an angle and cutting up to the line just under the arm. Careful of kickback, guys. Have a good grip. Be ready for it, be prepared. It does take some arm strength and shoulder and back. Now you could set yourself up with a little bit higher piece to be carving on so you're not bending down so far like I am. Totally up to you. 
Alright, so there's our paw and everything kind of defined. That side's pretty much done. Making a cut there for that side of the leg. I'm going to go in, meet it. Work on getting rid of that chunk in the center there. Totally missed that other line, but it's alright. There we go. A nice up cut under into the neck area. Kind of define the head. So the head sticking up past the arms just a little. Make a nice rounded cut all the way down. Define the paw right there. So it's on top of the lower paw. Doing some up cuts to the line just a little bit. Now define your arm. Going in about a half inch or so. You don't always have to remove a ton of material. So you see how I'm making those cuts to get rid of it? That's what we did on the other side. Angled in. Now we don't have to remove a ton of material to get the look, right? We just remove some wedges in there and, you know, the detailed part is done. Now make a little bit of angled cuts down at the base so he's not so squared off at the bottom and it gives him a little more you know roundedness for his butt and that is pretty much it guys he's all blocked out for you right so let's take a look here clean up around the face just a little bit if you need to remove some material or you know whatever you got to do around the snout if you got some overcuts kind of clean it up a little bit if not just leave them now we're going to go ahead here and start looking at this face and we're just going to use the nose to kind of scrape and round the head a little. It's just kissing the wood. By now your arms might be tired. Take a break and come back to this. 10-15 minutes and come back. Hour if you have to. Come back, scrape the wood and round it over. You want rounded. Alright, bears aren't square and blocky, they're rounded. Learn to do these things with the saw and you won't have to use the power tools as much. Come in, round that snout just a little bit. By an angle cut get the other side now trying to do detail work with just this bar can be difficult all right this is saw control you guys got to really you know practice it and get used to running it and, and doing these things but it'll come to you you'll get it just defining around my neck a little more things catch my eye as I'm you know working on pieces even pieces that are gonna be simple I just I can't leave them anymore I gotta you know <laughs> Got to try to see it through and get them as close to good as I can. Just making some cuts here, defining my legs, my arm, just a little bit more. We will get to that face. Alright, so I ran out of gas. And this is the joys of running your tank completely dry. Full choke, purple, 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 and wait for it to pop. One half choke. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's get in here. Furring. Okay, so that's what we're doing. We're furring here. Putting a little fur pattern on, and as you guys can see on the left, using the nose of the bar at an angle. So basically, using the side of the tooth, not plunge cuts, but the side of the tooth to put the fur on. Think about the way the fur is flowing down the face or the arms and just go around and fur it. The closer the fur is, the more realistic it is. If you chintz out right here because your arms are tired, you know, you'll be able to tell that you chintzed out, okay? And you, you can do less if you want. In my eyes, it's like you're putting all this work in, finish it, you know, take your time and put a bunch of fur on the bear and make it look like a complete piece. Right? You're really taking your time, so if you have to, take a break. This is where your forearms are going to be burning. All right, Your biceps, everything's going to be burning at this point. And you're going to be like, okay, I just want to get done and rush through it. Don't. Slow down. Take a break. If you have to, fill up. Before you even start this, maybe your sound needs to be refilled. Do that. Like, don't chintz out on this. This is going to make your piece look better all right you're gonna go from like your piece will go from looking like very very beginner 
to intermediate with nice fur pattern. So don't chins out. Take your time and put it in. As you guys can see, different angles and things. Um, I think we're going to skip ahead here in just a second to doing that face because the fur takes a little bit of time. It is easier with a dime tip bar, but as you guys can see, it can get done with that stock bar on the MS-170. So let's skip ahead to uh, doing the face. All right, whoops, before the face, we gotta do those claws. One, two little plunge cuts, maybe a quarter of an inch deep. If you can fit four, fit four. If you can only do three lines, then only do three lines. It'll be fine. People aren't always counting. Um, I got friends that bust my chops to make sure I do four. Say, so that's not realistic if there's three, but uh, you can get away with three lines. People, people are okay with it, they really are. Just rounding some edges here. And uh, let's get to that face. All right, so kneeling down here, kind of be cutting an angle up for that snout. Just kissing the wood, making our lines, as you guys can see. Okay. Rounding it up nice and smooth here. Just kissing the wood, using the nose of the bar, kind of like a sander, just sort of scraping rounding and scraping removing the material be careful you can get it overcut so have full control of the saw full control it's on you i'm standing up kind of just kissing in to make a little indent okay for our eyes or where they're going to be scraping up a little on the outside of that eye or it'll be in between them so it gives them a little bit of an eyebrow look Moving over, my camera died, so we're doing the same thing here with the nose though, just kind of scraping, making a little bit of an indent. Now you could leave it like this and just paint some eyes on if you don't have any other tools. You can also kind of come in with the nose and sort of do like a little angled cut. Kind of gives them an eyelid, kind of angled cutting here. Hopefully you guys can sort of see what I'm doing. Sorry, that second view, first hand view camera died on me, so. How much I can do about it, but there you go. Eyes are done. I don't realize it, so I'm trying to film, which is silly, but it's what it is. Just kind of put another little mark in there. Just kind of give those eyes a little bit of character. All right, so we got to move in and finish that mouth. All right, here we are. Saw at an angle, cutting up just a little. We're not going very deep here quarter of an inch at most just make a little mark around scrape the wood around the lower jaw and lower lips all right detail work things you can do with just the saw but it's saw control building muscle to be able to do it and the stamina to be able to to do it again you need breaks take them this does not have to be done in one take you're gonna pull muscles, you're gonna hurt yourself. Gotta build up to it. Sorry, the shots are bad. Again, still don't realize my camera is dead, but I'm just doing an up cut across with that nose to kind of make that lip. And I'm fully blocking the camera. What an awesome, awesome shot. Sorry. Just cleaning up around the nose, guys. That's it. All right, guys, so here's our bear. All right. These are the next tools we're gonna need though. Some kind of torch and a brush. A stiff brush works well, but we are, again, doing this for the very, very beginner carver who's just got a basic steel MS-170 chainsaw. And uh, this is, you know, what you can do with just the saw. So we kind of carved just some indents for the eyes, some little cuts for the nose and the mouth, right? You can still get a cute looking bear, guys. For, you do have an overcut, but it happens. Okay, don't forget to put your initials in your work. Make that a habit. Just something you always do. So, from this point, you know, how, how can we finish the bear? Now, this bear has sat for a few days for me. Obviously, if you've got a bigger torch, this is going to work easier. But I'm going to use um, a torch like most of you could easily get, which is just that single one-pound propane torch. Bear with me here while I put the camera back up over here. 
and we're gonna burn it. Now we burn it to get rid of the hard edges and any of the, uh, sorry guys, camera's being a pain. The hard edges and uh, any of the fuzz. Oh my word, hope you're not getting seasick. Any of the fuzzy. Um, again, the idea of this is you don't have a sand flex yet. You don't have any of that. You just have your chainsaw. And these are usually a couple things a lot of people have laying around just, you know, some kind of torch and a brush. So at this point, what you want to do is make sure your area is wet or not flammable. In this case, we've had some heavy rains for a couple days because this has actually been a two-part video for me, one-part video for you. And you want to torch it. Make sure your gas cans, oil cans are away. Get your torch going and just, just burn them up. Something to keep in mind, guys, if you're using pine, you get some flames still going. The knots usually are full of sap, very flammable in those spots, okay? All right, guys, so that's gonna be it with this torch. It just, it takes a while, but you guys can get the job done, okay? As you can see, he's all burnt. You can see where the, the cut was, you know? If you don't burn it too deep, it'll make it this eye kind of stand out. Obviously, the more you burn it, the darker the color, okay, compared to here to like down here. So, the brush, what's the brush for? Now, this is where you want to put a mask on if you guys have one. Gloves are nice, so you're not getting filthy. You want to brush all the dark stuff right down so it's not all loose uh, ash, okay? You clear coat over that. It just your clear coat's not going to stick and it's just going to peel away. So, if you hit it real quick, it actually helps blend the color. Now normally, this would be done with a flap sander, like the Sandaflex or something. But again, this video is for the very beginner, and we're just using that basic chainsaw to get to this point. A basic torch and a brush, okay? So let's say you've burnt your whole bear, and this is what you got, right? This is what he kind of looks like. He's done. Now you could go in and try to paint some eyes or you could get a drill bit and some marbles, like a 5 8 drill bit and 5 8 marbles off of uh, Amazon or something. Drill them out and pop them in and be done. In my opinion, I think it is better to learn how to carve them. That is an easy route, but you're constantly spending money. You always have to buy marbles. So if you save up, get yourself a die grinder and a quarter inch shaft, half inch green saber tooth burr flame burr you can carve the eyes and i can show you guys how now i have a code hall 10 capital h a l l right here 10 you guys use that at sabertooth.com and get a discount from now to the end of 2021 okay if not no big deal again this is for the very beginner you're not spending a ton of money to get started so those are just like the next sort of things now as part of this series you know for what we're doing is basic carvings. This would be ready for finish. I like to use the uh, Minwax Helmsman oil base, not the acrylic. Um, and you can put a couple coats on by hand or spray it. I like to brush it on and it uh, you know helps protect your bears. Now, the other thing you could do after you burn it and hit it with the brush is you can paint it black. Okay, it'd be ready to paint black and you could do that. But again, that's more money you have to spend. So what I'd like to do in this series is uh, use the MS-170, carve up another bear standing, maybe a welcome bear holding a sign. Um, the sign part is really tough though without a dime tip bar or anything else. So 
we'll kind of uh, take a look at that, address that, and see what we can do to possibly make something happen. You guys, right? Very beginners. Let's see what we can do with that MS-170 without a dime tip bar and uh, not very many tools. Now, for me, I'm going to go ahead and set this guy in my almost done pile. And when I get around to it, he'll get some eyes, we'll clean up the nose, the snout, and all that kind of stuff. What I think I'm going to do is make this very beginner part two one step further. The one step further is going to be cleaning this guy up to a final product. And that will be for more when you purchase, you know, the next set of tools. So I'll let you know what you need in that video to, uh, you know, to finish it. So if you're not subscribed, do that. Hit the bell hit all so you guys won't miss any uploads. Another thing to keep in mind, this log is going to split and crack this bear. It was out of a single round log, okay? It's going to dry faster on the outside than the inside, the middle. So that means the middle dries slow, outside dries fast. It's going to dry and crack around the middle. Where the crack happens, I don't know. But as a carver, I just say, hey, we'll deal with it and uh, we'll fix it when it happens. Now I have repair videos on here, so you guys can check those out as well. I'll try to have them popping up here. Um, if not, you guys can go to the uh, playlist that says, uh, I don't know, tutorial, tutorial chainsaw carving playlist I got anyway, and uh, that'll help you guys out. So hope this video is helpful. I know a bunch of you were asking about it. Hope this series is going to continue to be a helpful series as we continue on and uh, carve some other things, probably just more bears to get going. And uh, yeah, well, have fun guys, have fun with it, all right? Be sure you're wearing your safety gear, being safe. Keep your shaw, 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 saws sharp and uh, just have fun. Hope you guys have an awesome weekend and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.